Hello everyone. So this is Prem from Department of Food Technology. So today we are going to discuss some important uh, process or important uh, research topic. Also we can say okay. So the topic today we are going to discuss is food browning. Okay. So food browning is like an uh, sub browning of foods. Okay. So the name itself we can see that. browning how the browning is happening so what is actually this mechanism behind this browning process okay so first we'll see the actual definition okay so that is the process of food turning brown due to the chemical reaction that take place within okay so whenever the browning of food is happening okay so there will be some chemical reason will be there so we are going to see the what is the actual the chemical reaction is happening or is responsible to induce the brown color in the food products okay and it is one of the most important research topic also okay and also uh, we can see some artificial flavor and artificial color development okay so they are using all this uh, food browning reaction okay so to identify the artificial flavors and also the synthesis also okay so here the browning falls into two main categories the one is enzymatic browning and non enzymatic browning okay so food browning is classified into two one is enzymatic and non enzymatic so we will see for the enzymatic browning so enzymatic browning okay so name itself you see here enzymatic browning means the responsible okay so the brown color is which is happening here in this particular category is due to the presence of enzymes in the food products okay so the examples of the food products okay so mostly the uh, food products which is given for this browning category okay so mostly will come will be called as a perishable foods okay so perishable food means the moisture content will be more and also it will easily spoil okay so you see the fruits vegetables and seafoods okay so these three uh, category of the foods are given as enzymatic browning okay so because it contains the enzyme which is responsible for inducing the brown color okay so these process affect the taste color and value of such foods okay so we can see the n number of enzymes are available so particularly the browning is happening due to the enzyme called ppo that is polyphenol oxidase and the second important enzyme induce brown color is catechol oxidase and also many enzymes which and induce the uh, melanins and the benzaquinones means a brown pigment okay so that is also comes under this category so ppos the first the ppos are classified or it is discovered in uh, mushrooms okay so which reside in the plants and the chloroplast in the plant cell wall structure okay so the phenol compounds okay so mostly the phenol compounds is responsible for uh, uh, astringency and also the color bitterness flavor and nutritional qualities in fruits and vegetables okay so that's why so why the phenol compounds are present in the fruits and vegetable means it is like a defense mechanism so when a fruit uh, bird or uh, any that uh, uh, animals which is coming and eating the fruits and vegetables means those phenols will induce some astringency okay so it's like a self defense mechanism of the plants and uh, plants okay so that is the fruits and vegetables okay so in fruits and vegetables the enzymes are kept separate from their substrates okay so here the tissues are damaged they get together and the reaction occurs okay so when this phenols and the enzymes are kept separate is a slight barrier will be there okay so that barrier layer will protect the contact between this phenol with the enzymes okay so when the damage is happening so the phenol come and contact with the enzymes present in the uh, cell structures okay so then the reaction is onset and the browning progresses okay so the finally it will produce a uh dark brown pigment that is called as melanin okay so that is the end product of this enzymatic browning reaction okay so here we will see some uh, graphical representation or diagrammatic representation how this process is happening in the apples okay so first image you see here that is a bowl full of apples it's a fresh apples are kept and inside the apple you see the sex, uh, cell structure okay the so phenols i told okay phenols is responsible for color flavor astringency and bitterness 
okay so it is kept well uh, covered in the vacuoles okay that is a plant cell wall and ppo is an uh, pigment producing okay enzyme so which is kept separately in the plastids okay so this both this phenols and enzymes are kept separated okay so when a fruit is cut or when the fruit is under any damage okay so this barrier layer is disrupted okay so this barrier layer is disrupted so phenols will come in contact with this ppo and also the atmospheric oxygen it catalyzes the browning reaction okay so means it's a oxidation of polyphenols are happening here okay so the first pigment is formed that is called a squinone okay so it's a single polymer and it looks a colorless or a yellow color okay so then polymerization reaction is happening here so this single polymer is piled together and to produce a dark uh, brown pigment that is called as melanin okay at the end of the enzymatic browning reaction we can see the melanin okay so this is how the melanin or uh, the browning is happening in the enzymatic way okay so the important so next this is considered as a very most important reaction okay so other than the food stuff that is easily perishable means that is called as non enzymatic browning okay the first one we have discussed enzymatic browning the second one that is a non enzymatic browning okay so means enzymes are not responsible for inducing the brown color in this category okay so this is also called as maillard reaction so in this image you see the person the scientist that is louis camel maillard a french chemist and physicist okay so he is the person uh, first discovered the browning reaction okay in the non enzymatic way okay so in 1912 okay so he is in the in his laboratory he attempting to produce a, a biological protein synthesis reaction so there he noticed some brown pigment formation so there he started doing some set of the experiments or the research to come to know that so there is a chemical reaction is happening to induce brown color without enzymes okay so that's why uh, this non enzymatic browning reaction is also called as a maillard reaction okay so two names are given in this form okay and also the two types that is a maillard reaction and caramelization reaction okay so first we will discuss the maillard reaction okay so after the invention of this brown pigment uh, from this person that is a louis camel maillard so hodge is another scientist in 1953 described the steps involved in the maillard reaction process okay so what he told so it is a chemical reaction between the two components that is a free amino group and reacting with the reducing sugar that is a carbonyl group okay so wherever the amino acids reacting with the reducing sugars okay it will produce a browning color okay so and also the type of the sugar interacts with the uh, type of the amino acid it the varieties of flavors and odors will developed okay so this is how the uh, synthesis and the flavor and fragrances companies or industries they are identifying and isolating or synthesizing the many different artificial flavors by using this particular important reaction so this is the overall mechanism that is a flow process of a, a maillard reaction okay you see here as i told so it's a reaction between free amino compound with the reducing sugar okay so the amino compound here and the aldose sugar is given as an example here so when it's reacting with the aldose sugar okay so first compound it formed that, that is the n substitutes glycosylamine okay so this product is always called intermediate and unstable product this further it will go for amidary rearrangement to produce one amino one deoxy two ketones okay so it produces one amino one deoxy and two ketones okay so this is a one another important compound so from this there are the reaction the many reactions are associated with this particular compound okay so to produce a many the end product in this here that is called melanoidin okay so first we will see here. so you can see here the arrow which indicates the d okay so from this one amino one deoxy two ketones it produces the first the fission product that is called as acetal diacetal pyruvaldehyde okay so many compounds are formed here okay so further this compound it react with the alpha amino acids okay that is a free amino acid and it reduces a carbon dioxide releases a carbon dioxide and it forms a aldehyde so this is called as strecker degradation adolf strecker okay so adolf strecker is a scientist who invented this particular step and his name is kept for this reaction that is called strecker 
degradation okay so further this aldehydes will go and react with the existing amino compounds and it will produce a final melanoid in pigment okay so there are we can we cannot say that particular compound only producing the melanoid in, in this uh, melanoid reaction okay there are set of uh, compounds uh, reacting with the remaining amino acids again and again and finally to producing the melanoidins and also direct root way also is there here to produce the amino compounds okay means that is a melanoidins okay so from here you see here the same the fission products is producing the aldols and nitrogen free polymers and further reacting with amino compound to produce a melanoidins okay and also fission products directly without uh, involving or uh, producing the shortcut products okay so directly it also it can produce the amino compound so reacting with amino compound and produces the melanoidins okay so the next you see the c the varo mark you see here the, the c the given as a c okay it releases the three water molecules and produces the skiff base of hydroxy methyl that we will be uh, in short form will be called as a hmf okay that is hydroxy methyl furfurals are also called as two furol dehydes okay so when again this uh, hmf is reacting with amino compound and also it again it adds one water molecule and it produces the hmf for two furol dehyde okay so that is uh, again it's reacting with amino compound it produces the melanoidins okay and the sugar molecules okay the remaining sugar molecules will go reaction with the fission products and also it produces the reductones and this reductones further it will go for another reaction to produce a dihydroreductones okay so this reductones and dihydroreductones is called as a powerful antioxidants okay so the sugars directly go with the reaction of hmfs to produce a melanoidin in the way of reacting with the amino acid okay so this all compounds reacting with the existing or the remaining amino compounds to produce the dark melan brown color pigment okay, that is brown nitrogenous polymers in the copolymer pigment that is called as melanoidins okay so in the enzymatic browning the end product is called as melanins and the non enzymatic browning the end product is called as a melanoidins so here you can see that the explanation is given here for your understanding and we will see certain some examples with the sugars and amino acids okay so amino acids the particularly the lysine okay so which having the side chain okay so it will re react well with the sugars okay that is the reducing sugars so it produce a rich taste and color to the food products okay for example whey protein okay so rich in lysine as an amino acid and it will be used as an additive to brown the food okay and lysine content in flour especially in the bread making process okay the flour if it is rich in the lysine means the browning of the bread is very very uh, appreciable okay so very very uh, looks good brown in color okay so next we'll see the sugars okay ribose is a simple sugar okay so we can see this ribose sugar mostly in the chicken beef pork salmons and mushrooms which browns well okay so this all these food products will brown okay so glucose okay so glucose also is simple that's a monosaccharide sugar that we contains uh, we can see in the rice pasta and cereals okay it is not like ribose but it will also will go for uh, pigmentation it is a brown pigment at less extreme okay so lactose so okay, lactose is also a milk sugar and also it's called as a non reducing sugar okay so we know that reaction between the reducing sugar amino compounds reacting with the reducing sugar means the it will produce a brown pigment okay so lactose also a sugar but it is categorized as a non reducing sugar okay so the non reducing sugar will not go for reaction that's why when you heat the uh, milk continuously for long time the milk will not turn into a brown color we cannot see the brown color milk okay so instead of browning it will go for the charring so this is the reason why milk is not turning the brown in color why milk is going for the charring okay because lactose will not react with the amino acids to induce a brown in color so health impact okay so we all uh, very uh, interested attracted by the fried foods the brown color foods right so we will see now so what is the impact on health okay so melanoidin is the end product that is also called as mrp means melanoid reaction products okay so there is no single mrp okay so it also include acrylamide heterocyclic amines glycation epoxidation in products okay so this all compounds are also called as mrps okay so carboxy methyl lysine that is cml will induce diabetes and cvd cvd means 
means cardiovascular diseases and acrylamide is known for a uh, mutagen as is a carcinogen such cancer producing compounds so accumulation of mrps leads to atherosclerosis nephropathy neuropathy retinopathy and cataract okay so when you keep on uh, consuming the fried foods or brown pigmented foods means definitely the accumulation will be there in the human system so after some time so this mrps will leads to the way to get the atherosclerosis nephropathy neuropathy retinopathy and cataract okay so this mrps binds to specific receptors in the macrophages okay so which results in synthesis of cytokines growth factors and enhance oxidative stress okay so oxidative stress is the main reason it will also for the aging process will be occur in a rapid way so these events play a major role in aging and diabetes okay so for everything there is a limitation right okay so when you consume brown or mrps containing products means uh, we can the recent research also says that uh, a set of scientists have isolated the acrylamide okay so acrylamide from the french fries okay so that is a, also called as a carcinogen okay the hplc analysis of the french fries shows that presence of the carcinogen okay so everything there is a limit so keep uh, consuming the healthy foods stay healthy thank you so thank you all uh, for listening uh, hope you understand the concepts of uh, food browning and also the types and what's happening and how it having an impact on our health okay so i will i will discuss on some other interesting topic in food technology so till then thank you so thank you all uh, for